The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Friday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets catching a bid, folks. We're in positive territory in the S&Ps, NASDAQ 100, and the Dow. Zooming in on the action on the S&Ps, it's been quite a week. Monday, you accelerate to an all-time high of 44.76. We make a low yesterday early of 43. 47. You're talking about almost 130 S&P points, and then they buy the dip on the morning and guess what they're buying the dip again folks this morning you accelerate lower at about 3 a.m to a low pre-market of just about 4370 and just basically in the last half hour since about 8 30 this morning you're higher you're trading at 4404 you're positive by two points in the s p's tech stocks trading higher as well yesterday you make it to 14,999. 14,999 was the high yesterday. We're climbing up to that level right now. 14,969 in the S&Ps. Dow positive by 12 points. 34,831. The Russell, the laggard, as usual. You take a look at the Russell. We're talking about all-time highs of 2366. And the Russell really bumping up against the lower boundary line that we've been trading in, right? Let's zoom in on the Russell here. Interesting action. 2100, that or thereabouts, has been the lower boundary line whether you back it up to March, you back it up to the end of March, you back it up to the low we had in May, you make it down to a low of 2112, you make it down to a low in July of 2100 on the dot, 2110 pennies, and then between yesterday and today, we have a low of 2108, 2109. As you see, we're lining up to that level. Now, if you go back to February, you did have a low there of 20. 28 but the russell we're a solid what is it now 236 points basically off of the highs in the russell bitcoin catching a little bit of a bid let's take that off on bitcoin let's zoom in on the 15 minute chart you have bitcoin trading higher from yesterday's action yesterday you had a low thursday Excuse me, Thursday at about midnight at about 44,000. We're trading at 47,130. Crude continuing to, dec to decline. We almost got a 61 handle on crude this morning. We're trading at 62.71 right now, down 80 cents. Tough week for crude. When you look last Friday, we were approaching almost $70 on the price of crude. Gold contract hanging out. Pretty tame week on gold, kind of just chopping around between about 1780 and close to 1800. We're trading at 1782. And we jump to notes and bonds. Pretty tame week for notes and bonds as well, considering the market action we've had. Right now, you got the 10 year basically flat. That's going to correlate to a yield right now of 1.24% on the 10 year, about one and a quarter percent on the 10 year. You take a look at the daily and you see the run that we've had. Let's even take a look at a weekly for some real context here. You accelerate up to 140.24 when you talk about the COVID basically highs in price, lows in yield there. It's been quite a rise that we've had. When you back it up to where we were in March, a little bit of volatility, but all things considered, just chopping around right now. And we finish it off with the VIX. Volatility index right now had been a series of lower lows and lower highs. The recent high, when you back it up to about a month ago, July 19th, now this is a weekly, okay? Let's put it on a daily to get the full action. We're gonna put it on daily. We're gonna zoom it in on the lows and the highs that we've had recently going back to about a year ago, uh, a little bit more than a year ago, actually, correlating to June of 2020. And you see, folks, when you put the highs and the lows on there, we're talking about lower lows, lower highs, same thing this week. Uh, when you look, the high we had there, 24.74. Look at the highs we've had. 41.16 back in October, 37.51 in January, 31.90 in March, 28.93 in May, 25.09 in July. And now we get a high of 24.74. And we'll see if we pull back or if the market volatility persists coming into late August trading, coming into September, summer, nearing an end. All right, let's jump around to what we have going on this morning. We got some stocks out there with earnings, uh, and there's your VIX action. We were up to almost 24 last night, but as the market has paired those losses, even in the last half hour, talk about a resurgence, folks, really remarkable. All things considered on the S&P, right? Talked about it yesterday, bumping up against that lower boundary line, folks. You put the S&P on a chart, you back it up to basically where we were 
in November. Now, as I've stated, all right, it's an art, not a science, technical analysis, folks. If it was a science, it would be solvable. It's not solvable. Um, and as you see, pretty well-defined channel line, right? You go from where we were in November, vaccine efficacies get released, the market takes off in dramatic fashion. You trade from a price point of about 3,200. We're sitting at 4,400. Multiple times we've bumped along this bottom boundary line or the top line early on in that trend channel we were bumping up against the upper boundary line you fast forward to about may since about may we've kind of been teetering on the bottom part of that but each time we have we found a dramatic bid whether you back it up to june 21st now look at this folks all right do you remember i mean we do these are some harsh lines let's just zoom it in whether you have the acceleration back in may but they're really this is now this is a daily june 18th we have a high of 42.20, a low of 41.40. That's an 80-point S&P bar while well, we get it back on the Monday when we come back. You zoom it in on July 19th, we have a bar that's approaching 100 points. Now, you don't close up, but from a high to a low, 43.20 on the high, 42.24 on the low. You do close it out at 42.61. So you get back some of those losses on July 19th. Very next day, you basically get it all back. And what do we do again, folks? You back it up to yesterday's action. Quite the resurgence. You hit that line. We're trading higher even this morning again, rejecting lower price as we come into Friday trading. You have option expiration going on as well. And we got markets in positive territory to kick things off. All right, let's jump around to some of the equities that are making moves this morning. And before we do, uh, China, they got some problems over in China, folks, in a big way in terms of their markets. You got the Nikkei down a percent right now, Shanghai down 1.1 percent, Hang Seng down 1.8 percent, as they say. And that takes the gauge uh, losses to more than 20 percent. You're talking about a bear market. Should not be surprising, folks. These stocks stay away from these stocks. Now, folks, could you make money trading, even buying? some of the Chinese stocks. Alibaba, could you make money trying to buy, trying to catch a falling knife? Yes, yes, you definitely can. Are there easier ways in this market to potentially make money? Yes, I think there are. Um, you're talking about a 20% haircut, folks. Some of the big flyers over there, they are down much more than 20%. You're talking about Alibaba trading from 320 to 160. Simple math, folks, that's a 50% haircut on Alibaba. Diddy shares, they were up at 18 bucks before all hell broke loose and now you're trading at 720, putting that back on a daily, it's just a slow slide to negative prices, folks. I don't know where the pain ends, but uh, you're, you're messing with variables that you can't quantify. That's the tough part about trading these. That just turns into straight gambling. And yeah, there might be a way to trade this with a, a risk capital that you're willing to basically lose all of the equity that you put into any one of these specific equities because you're dealing with variables that you cannot quantify, all right? Nobody, um, and yeah, I guess there are people out there, they're probably existing in China or very high level State Department, very high level CIA, CIA whatever it is. Um, these are geopolitical issues that might stretch decades over in China, all right? President Xi over there, he is not concerned with the prices of their equities tomorrow. He's concerned with control over that company for decades to come when he'll be the dictator in charge of China. Keep that in mind when you're trying to find these. Doesn't mean you can't trade them in today, right? The volatility, traders love volatility, but man, they got some big problems over in China. Uh, Kathy Woods catches a lot of grief over at ARK um, in terms of just parading around the tech stocks, but the one thing I think she nailed, folks, she stepped out of China stocks immediately, completely, and kudos to her, because I don't know how you're buying those, the term uninvestable out there as well. All right, folks, come on back. Take a look at some of the equities with Bernie. We got Footlock trade higher today. We got John Deere trade higher as well. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45 year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. It's going to be an interesting Friday in the markets as we have an acceleration from lower prices coming into the open. Woke up early this morning about 6 a.m. checking on the markets. There is 6 a.m. on the chart. You have the S&P trading at about 43.82. As you see, we had basically just a slide from negative prices from the close yesterday. So, uh oh. What's going to happen on Friday? Things can be a little dicey. Good option expiration. For the first time this week, we've had quite an acceleration in the VIX up to 24.74. We have indications from Fed minutes that we might get some tapering towards the end of this year. We have benefits expiring in September for additional benefits. Uh, it's all kind of coming to roost right now, folks. That is what puts this forefront in the market. It'll be interesting to see how some of that economic data comes out, whether you talk about we're going to get August, July, um, excuse me, August non-farm payroll numbers coming up. I mean, these numbers are going to come, folks, and they're going to be important. And it's a little bit dicey when we see some of the case numbers, some of the hospitalizations. We're, of course, in Florida. Everybody pretty much aware at this point, the numbers in Florida, the schools in Florida, um, the kids getting hit. Hillsborough County, I think they're up to more than 10,000 kids in some form of stepping out of class, whether they're quarantined for just exposure or a positive case, 10,000 kids. Now, there's more than 200,000 kids in Hillsborough County. I think it's the seventh biggest county for school uh, in the nation, something like that. We talk about 10,000 kids, you're talking about like 500 teachers. Point being, you get those kids back at home, folks, somebody's got to take care of those kids, all right? Not only was it supposed to be the benefits expiring, I'm bringing this back to the market, all right? Humanity is involved here as well. You've heard me talk about it. I encourage you, if you have the ability and you haven't yet, for your own benefit, folks, to protect yourself and those around you to go out and get vaccinated. All right. The people who are clogging up the hospitals right now, a majority of those people by a preponderance of a majority of those people are unvaccinated. And if we're filling up hospitals, that is the quickest way that we might get restrictions that lock back down the economic activity that we're all waiting for here. Um, and so that's kind of why you add it all together. You got benefits expiring in September. You got 10,000 kids in Tampa staying home. All right, that's going to bring parents home with them. There's no denying that. It's going to bring parents home with them. That's going to hurt economic data. People are going to be out of work that might have been back at work. Even if you're at home and you have kids at home, that's hampering productivity. That's hampering economic productivity, which is going to add to GDP, the whole deal. So it's a little dicey here. Encouraging to see the market catching a bit, though, as you get the S&Ps up six points right now, coming into the open at 44.07. All right, 
Let's jump around to what we have going on in terms of stocks making moves in the earnings front. And we're going to start off with Foot Locker. Strong numbers from Foot Locker here. Retail, big week of retail, uh, second big week of retail, you could say. Um, and some strong, strong numbers across the board we've seen. Let's get into them. Uh, where are we? Come on. Where's the headline number here? Don't link. I was just reading it. Net income. 430 million or 409 a share compared with yeah a year earlier doesn't matter um revenue surged 9.5 percent to 2.28 billion from 2.08 a year earlier comp store sales rose 6.9 percent here's the number analysts had been looking for a 0.2 percent decline that is quite a beat folks and Foot Locker, they are benefiting as they should and there's your acceleration from about 55 up to 60 you're up almost 10 percent on that equity uh the conference call just beginning at nine o'clock in the morning as the show began we take a look at the three-year weekly this thing well above pre-covid levels we came into COVID at about 40 bucks we just made a high recently of 66.71 just missed that at high we had there in february just for some context here at an all-time high would deal with come on or swim come on where's my monthly data there it is uh yeah so not quite up to an all-time high they had back dating to 2016 but still right up to that level bouncing within about 30 cents of that high we had of 68 dollars we make it to a high of 66.71 we're going to open above 60 today Seems like it would make a run for that high of 66.71. When you're talking about comp sales of almost a 7% increase when the market was looking for basically flat to slightly lower, you had the CEO uh, saying the company saw strong demand in its women and kids footwear business in addition to its apparel and accessory segments, uh, promotions in check, fueling profits, he said. The CFO commented that the retailer remains cautiously optimistic about its outlook for the second half of the year, recognizing we're still operating in uncertain environment due to COVID-19. Earlier this month, they announced it would be buying two smaller store chains for a total of about a billion dollars, 1.1, as they look to basically... Uh, consolidate a little bit at a time when they are accelerating from a low of what was that low 14 17 17 bucks and we're going to open this morning at 60. all right what else we got we got john deere uh, with their numbers strong numbers as well john deere trading up about eight dollars from 358 to 398 we jump over to their numbers 532 a share market was looking for 458 some of the analyst numbers just all over the place and it you know you got to give them a little bit of shade because there's so much uncertainty in this market going on but it's almost becoming like the the norm that these companies are just crushing some of the estimates here um so they beat it on profit it, revenue beats as well and they're trading higher raised its full year earnings forecast on solid demand for farm equipment all right, what else we got going on? Jumping down the line, Spotify. They announced its board approved a billion dollar stock buyback. Things are good at Spotify. They're trading a little bit higher on that news as to be expected. There's your Spotify action from 205 up to about 209 this morning. We have the markets positive as well. AMAT out with their numbers. They beat as well by 13 cents. They make $1.90 a share, which is a beat by 13 cents. Revenue topped as well. Better than expected outlook. But AMAD falls 1.3%. Talk about some lofty expectations. Uh, not so much, actually. We're driving higher. So you're about, about a buck on AMAT. Now, you take a look at this thing, right? Quite a rocket ship. You come into COVID at about 60 bucks. You really accelerate on the vaccine efficacy numbers from 60 bucks up to 146. This morning, we're going to open at about 130 for AMAT shares this morning. Jumping down the line, what else we got going on? Speaking of retail, Ross. Quarterly profit, $1.39 a share. Market was looking for 98, better than expected revenue. However, its current quarter and full year earnings outlook fell short of forecast. Market only cares about what you're gonna do for me in the future, folks, not what you did for me in the past. These companies are valued on future multiples, not what you did in the past. Raw stores, not so much. And you're gonna open down about $4, I think it was, pre-market. There's your acceleration on their numbers last night, catching a little bit with the market, but still uh, off about $5 from their numbers. Now let's just check in on some of the other companies they've reported this week, see how they're hanging up. You had TJ Maxx out with their numbers on Wednesday morning. They've accelerated higher. You had Kohl's out with their numbers. They really accelerated yesterday as well, up to about 56.31. Macy's, one of the biggest winners, holding on to the gain so far this morning. We're basically flat after this thing was up almost 20% at one point yesterday to 
at 22.19. You're trading at 21.65. I talked about it a little bit on my show yesterday. Um, Macy's getting pretty innovative with some of the square footage that they have. Now, this is a three-year weekly. Talk about a max pain situation. They come into COVID already in trouble, right? Retailers, let's back it up to a five-year weekly. Ah, let's back it up to a monthly for the full context here to really get a grasp of how the pain was a max pain situation. Macy's trading at 21. This thing was a one-way ship from 73 bucks back in 2015. You did get a run slightly up to a high of about 40 bucks in 2018 before you dive down to $4. But Macy's, maybe that's the low. You trade basically right down to the lows we had in 2008, which is remarkable. Uh, and Macy's, though, they're going to be teaming up with Toys R Us. They're going to have 400 stores. They're going to have stores in stores, basically. They're going to have Toys R Us stores. And I don't know Macy's, folks. We got nothing in my newsletter. But that's the type of innovation that these companies are going to have to achieve to compete when you got Amazon going to be building their own department stores. I think it was in Ohio um, and one other state they're going to start. Uh, they're going to have a floor print of about the size of a TJ Maxx and a Kohl's, not quite as Macy's, but Macy's. They're going to have Toys R Us stores in stores, bringing those bombs in there, maybe, then having them buy high margin items when they're in the store. Makes sense. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the S&P barely in the positive right now. We're trading basically flat at 4402. You have the NASDAQ 100 slipping into the positive as well by about 38 points. We got all the markets pulling back a little bit on the open, though. We got the Dow negative by 19 points right now, 34,800. And as I mentioned, Russell continuing to lag. You get the Russell down three points right now at 2125. Jumping over to crude. Crude trading at 6257. We get the rig count today at about one o'clock, I believe. Uh, one of the only really economic data points out today as its option expiration today as well and we jump around to what else we got going on and we started off with tesla you got the man elon musk he's out there touting his next big thing um as he always is and uh as they put it here interesting right tesla swaps year away robo taxis for year away humanoid robot he is quite a pr man uh elon musk and he's more than that because he's gotten it done at tesla to his credit but man, he is quite the PR guy. And uh, the reason why they have multiples that they do over at Tesla is because you don't hear, you know, GM talking about humanoid robots, right? You don't hear that. You hear Tesla talking about it, though. More than two years after touting a plans to turn Tesla vehicles into robo taxis that have yet to materialize. Some of Elon's speak never quite materializes. Elon Musk held another highly technical event about autonomous driving development. Robots on wheels are still a ways off, it seems. So now he's plugging one on legs. After a 90 minutes of engineering talk spanning neural networks, computer vision, and data labeling, the CEO seated the stage during the company's AI day event to human to a human dressed and walking like robot we think we'll have a probably a prototype sometime next year that's just a prototype folks that basically looks like this he said late thursday shortly after person in skin tight white suit and black helmet performed a techno fred astaire dance sequence um now musk still a young guy 50 years old was more measured than he was during his Tesla autonomy day in April 19, refraining from any predictions about when the company's vehicles will be able to go driverless. He also avoided, avoided the subject of the recent uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration opening of the investigation having to do with Tesla's autopilot. So he's pairing a little bit of his uh, lofty uh, aspirations for this company. Um, the bot reveal excitement will likely provide a near tomb boost to shares. That's a Wells Fargo analyst talking about. Folks, uh, if you're buying Tesla on a bot prototype that's going to come within a year just because Elon says it is, you know, they are. That's why the company's up there. But, man, that's a, that's quite a volatile uh, trading plan. Now, here's some, some staggering numbers. When you think about the type of data and type of calculations that are going to be necessary, it's a quintillion. That's 10 to the 18th floating point operations per a second, enough to stimulate a human brain. The D1 chip showing off during the event is crucial to Dojo, a previously touted supercomputer Tesla plans to use for simulation and video trading. Musk said the company should have Dojo operating next year and tweeted about its capabilities after the event. Well, what do we got? We got, you know, they're going to have the chip next year. They're going to have walking robots next year. They're going to have robo taxis next year as well, even though he didn't reference it. Uh, there's a lot of off, uh, optimistic goals over at Tesla, and rightfully so. He's he's quite the dynamic man. He's always got big plans. He wants to go get humanity to Mars at some point, uh, along with many other things. Um, but interesting. And there's your Tesla bot there and what they're talking about. Um, but the the keep your eye on the prize here in terms of, yeah, Musk has a history of availing prototypes and selling a vision long before actual products are ready. In November 2017, folks, November 2017, we're going back almost four years ago, Tesla unveiled a semi-truck that has yet to go into production. Four years ago, that company. It's been pushed back to next year at the earliest, due in part to challenges making larger battery cells promoted in September of last year. He's got a big vision um, for investors. The bot is something new that they can dream about. And that's all it is right now, folks. It's a dream. But guess what? Building a, building a car company that sells electric cars and competing with GM, Toyota and all the likes and crushing them when it comes to market capitalization. That was a dream as well. I'm presenting both sides of it. It's cool to think about the future. And it's really cool when you start talking about the type of calculations computers are going to be crunching. But they got a long way to go. There was a great article yesterday talking on Bloomberg that we've gotten 99 percent of the way to self-driving cars. And that last one percent is going to be the problem. And it makes sense. You can't plan for every type of scenario. You can 
but it's very difficult programmable for every single scenario that may play out in the world. When you think about folks, the human brain is amazing. When you think about how many sensory um, items our brains are interpreting as you're driving a vehicle, right? You have a, you have, what is it? At least a 270 degree almost frame of sight. You're, you're think about how much data is coming in that you're observing. You think about the, the millions of different scenarios that could play out, whether it's cones on the road, they, the self-driving cars have trouble with rain, with sleet, and they almost have to be infallible. Um, and they're struggling. And that article yesterday was talking about Google's division. I think it was Waymo. And uh, same thing seems to be happening with Tesla, though, because those robo taxis, they ain't coming anytime soon. If they were, you'd hear Elon talking about it endlessly. All right. And Tesla, they're up 1.7 percent today, having to do probably with a little bit of that as well. But all the markets catching a little bit of a bid. You got the S&Ps up almost 10 right now. NASDAQ up 48 points. Let's check around to some of the FANG stocks as we open. You got Amazon trading up about $10 to 31.97. Man, Microsoft has been quite a rocket ship. How about it? We get 300 this morning for the first time on Microsoft. They're going to be going up on the price of their products. I was listening to the replay of my dad show during the 8 o'clock hour, and he was talking about maybe a 20% pop in some of their items. Uh, we use Microsoft 365, small company. I believe it's only $99. They might have opted. Um, and yes, $100 is nothing to shake your head at. It's still $100. But when you think about the value that that can provide for, for email, and that comes with use of whether it's email, and then it comes with, that's Outlook, but you're getting the whole suite Microsoft 365, and it might be more than 99 right now. Um, maybe somebody out there in the YouTube Tiger's Den, maybe in the Tiger's Den knows, um, because you're talking about whether it's Outlook, you're talking about Excel, you're talking about PowerPoint, you're talking about Microsoft Word, you get the whole suite of it, and yeah, they love it because it's software as a service, you're paying that recurring payment, Companies, that's what they're all about, the cloud these days. But man, Microsoft, talk about an acceleration. You put this thing on a three-year weekly. Look at that acceleration, folks. You start off 2019 at 100 bucks. We're at 300 bucks. You start off 2020 at $157. We've doubled the price from the beginning of last year. We've tripled the price from the beginning of 2019. And we've risen about $75 now from $225. You're up more than 30% this year alone on Microsoft. Apple's been quite the juggernaut as well. There's your three-year chart from uh, Apple. We go from $35, split adjusted, of course, to $150. Start off last year at about $75, so you've doubled basically from the beginning of last year. Not quite the same performance this year, though, as Apple really crushed it last year to higher prices. But man, you look where we were just back in May. You had Apple trading at 123. You're up at 147. Now, both of these companies, the number of shares they have outstanding is staggering. Apple is pushing 16.5 billion shares. I believe Microsoft's got about seven, like half of that or so. Come on, think or swim. Come on. There we go. Microsoft. Slide down, and folks, think of Swim, they are a sponsor, outstanding platform. If you trade options at all, yeah. So Microsoft's got 7.5 billion shares, um, and you have traded up $75 this year alone. 7.5 billion shares. Every 10 bucks, 75 billion to the market cap. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back in three minutes. We'll continue the conversation. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps positive by seven right now. Jumping around to some of the other stories that caught my eye. So we Gen 2 Tesla. This one's interesting. So OnlyFans. Uh, this one came out yesterday. If you're familiar with OnlyFans, if you're not familiar, it's basically a website, subscription-based website that people can run themselves that allows them to post content for their quote-unquote fans at a premium price usually. Uh, it has basically shifted to an area of sexually explicit, explicit content. You've got a bunch of, whether it's Instagram uh, influencers out there, you have people with, you know, millions of followers out there trying to monetize that following. Now what's going on is, and they have some huge numbers in terms of the, the, the profits that this company is making. Um, they are going to ban sexually sexual content is how they put it here after pressure from banks. Now there's a lot going on here and I'm just going to break it down because number one, they're a private company. They need banks to process payments, of course, but Pornhub, which is the biggest porn site on the internet had their own problems with banks processing their payments and they had to cramp down on unverified accounts because there was all these problems that they might have been pushing porn out that was whether it was underage all this stuff point being that porn hub operates and is able to process payments um, because porn is not illegal okay hope that's known um, so they process payments somehow only fans should be able to allow sexual content and still facilitate processing of payments. Okay, now they are doing some insane business here. Getting into the numbers here, uh, they have 130 million users, 2 million content creators, net revenue of 375 million last year. Okay, they expect to hit 1.2 billion in revenue this year and 2.5 billion in 2022. 300 creators on there earn more than a million dollars by themselves. 16,000 creators made at least 50 grand on that platform by themselves. Um, and you don't have to have sexual content. That is basically what it's used for, but not all accounts do that. Uh, now, here's where it gets interesting, okay? They talk about that the move is necessary as they've faced some resistance. It comes after payment processors MasterCard and Visa last year cut ties with rival site Pornhub after accusations the porn site showed videos containing underage sex, rape, revenge porn, lots of horrible stuff. Can't have that happening, but they seem to gotten that in line. Pornhub did. They denied the claims about it tighten its rules and prohibits uploads of unverified users. So they trimmed their business to basically allow that to happen. The point being here is 
only fans is saying this has to happen because they want to ensure the long-term stability of their platform and continue to host an inclusive community, okay? My guess here is, folks, is that they're having trouble raising money from venture capitalists, okay? They want to go public. They want the multiples associated with a public company, and they can't do it because the numbers there aren't going to add up when many, I'm trying to get it, so, yeah, the firm seeking a round of funding that would value it at more than $1 billion. It's majority owned by, never heard of this gentleman, a Ukrainian-American porn entrepreneur. Um, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors out there. It's interesting how it happens, but they're blaming payment processors on here, when in reality, they can't raise money because venture capitalists don't want to be in that business. So they're trying to trim it. Interesting, nonetheless, it's a juggernaut business when you think about it. Only fans, um, they're going to do $1.2 billion this year as a private company, potentially two. Point five billion by 2022. But guess what? We know how it works. You push that out to the public, you get a multiple on there on the growth they're dealing with. When you go from 375 million to 1.2 billion to 2.5 billion in the period of two years, the multiples of a public company, there might be pretty dramatic. We'll see how that shakes out. Um, but they're kind of blaming those credit card companies when in reality, I just think they want to go public and they want to get that VC money in a big way and they can't get it right now with the business they're running. But guess what, folks? You don't need it when you're doing $375 million a year to $1.2 billion to $2.5 billion. Interesting, nonetheless. All right, we go from that to crypto. Coinbase, they're buying $500 million in crypto and investing future profits into a crypto portfolio. Should not be surprising that the largest regulated crypto exchange are they regulated i'm not even sure largest crypto exchange i'll just say um is keeping all their profits in crypto i mean they live and die by crypto folks they're never going to be saying i'm not going to hold crypto i'm going to hold cash their whole argument is that crypto is the future you take a look at coinbase and this thing's been struggling right out of the gate we've been basing around between 225 and 250 250 i believe was the reference price just so you remember folks that reference price means absolutely nothing it's an arbitrary price that the creators of that, the owners of that company got to pick when it went public. They picked a low price, hoping that you would never go below that level, because obviously we'd be out there talking about it saying, hey, you're below the reference price that they went public, quote unquote, at. But nonetheless, you're higher a little bit today. You had Bitcoin catching a bid. We're up $1,000 on Bitcoin. You have Coinbase up about 3%. Not surprising. They're going to keep all their money they have in crypto. That company is going to live and die by crypto. Uh, Volkswagen. So the story was out yesterday that you had Toyota uh, talking about 40%, I think it was. They might have to cut at one of their plants. Volkswagen cuts output at biggest plant as chip shortage bites is the headline. Audi division will extend summer break due to dearth of supply. Yeah, going on summer break because they don't have any items that can make cars. Uh, the Wolfsburg plant, the world's biggest, employing some 60,000 people, will, will restart with only one shift next week, Monday through Friday. Audi, the group's biggest profit contributor, that's Volkswagen's biggest profit contributor, will extend their summer break by one week at its two factories in Germany as semiconductor supply remains volatile and tense. Karmic is recent warnings as they talk about Toyota. There we go. Suspend output at 14 plants across Japan for various lengths of time through next month. 14 plants are basically just shutting it down for a month. Uh, and there it is. Slashing production plan by 40% for Toyota. We jump over Toyota shares. There was your fall off yesterday to 170. You're down to 164 again for that company as they continue to struggle. But you know what's not struggling, folks? The S&P, we're catching a bid. We're up 20 points now. Remarkable action. We're now above the highs that we had on yesterday. Next stop is probably going to be 44.40. We're trading at 44.20 right now. We take a look at the volatility index, and we might get a 19, 19 handle by the time the show is done. All right, let's jump around to some of the equities I love taking a look at. Man, they've been in trouble recently, that's for sure. Disney shares. Now, Disney, if you're an owner of Disney, all right? We have Disney in my newsletter. You've pulled back. You've been lagging dramatically. I mean, this year alone, you're basically flat to slightly in the red as the markets have risen. You got Disney trading at 173, and you've just been skipping around at this 170 price point as a point of support. That's correlating to the 382 all the way from about 117. You run to 203. You make a high in March. The world looks like it's going to open back up. Not so much the case. Disney dealing with some problems. They got mass mandates again going on. Floor of the cases we got going on in a big way, putting a hamper on that. Movie theater chains. Um, I went to a movie. Mm, it was maybe in May. Or June. It was before cases accelerated in Florida. I ain't going to a movie right now, folks. 
Not happening, all right? And I went to a movie in a movie theater. I'm vaccinated. My family's vaccinated. Went to a movie theater. Felt great. I loved it. You know, the world's back. Not so quick, unfortunately, um, as hospitals just uh, plow and hire at a time when, you know, We've went over it, folks. It's unfortunate, but that's putting a hamper on Disney. But look for 170 on Disney to hold some strength here. You've pulled back even in the last like five, six days. We were up at 186 um, as things become a little bit more apparent that the parks and the movie theater business is going to take a little while to open up. But man, they had some strong numbers on that acceleration on their earnings and the market just shaking it off as they beat. But Disney, folks, Disney Plus, that is the future of that company. Wait until the world opens back up. That stock's going to be a lot higher. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call. And you, too, can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps. Trading up 19 points at 44.20. Let's jump around to some commodities. We got crude catching a bit, back above $63. Been a little bit of a tough week for crude. We take a look at crude on the daily. You're pulling back to about that 382. That would be a $60 price tag on crude, kind of where we chopped around at about April, almost pulled back to that level. When you back it up to the lows of May, you're talking about 6156. Been quite a slide for crude. This could just be a little bit of a pullback and a consolidation before it moves higher, but I'd keep your eye on that $60 price point. Also, that round number of $60, kind of a mental barrier, especially when we chopped around in that area in March. You head below that. 
maybe $50 is the next stop at a 618 of that retracement level on the price of crude. And that's going all the way back to the run it had from November. We jump to gold. Gold hanging top at 1783. Now, gold, interesting. A couple weeks ago, Sunday night, you have that dive lower to a price of 1677.90, correlating right to the lows that we had back in March. Okay, now you take a look at the longer term chart on gold, though. And that's quite a trend channel, all right? Doesn't really match up, you know, in terms of where we are. Where's that line? Where's this line? But doesn't take a statistician, technician to see that the trend is to negative prices, folks. We have caught some bids. Oh, man, there's a lot of big red bars on that chart. Encouraging, encouraging weekly bar. Yes, last week and gold trying to finish in the green. Pretty tame action after that acceleration lower. Might need to breathe a little bit after it charged higher on last week's weekly bar to finish with that hammer pattern on gold. But you'd want to see it break above that channel line. You're talking about 1875 right now would be the upper boundary in that gold price. S&P's up about 20 points as we come into the end of the program right now. And we'll finish it up with notes and bonds. Why not, folks? We got the 10-year. We're trading a little bit lower. We're down about three ticks right now, and that's going to correlate to a yield. As I pull it up, you're talking about a yield of 1.253%. Slight rise, 1.253. Over in Europe right now, you get the DAX basically flat. FTSE up about one-tenth percent. CAC roll up about two-tenths percent. So pretty tame action over in Europe. It is option expiration. You know that anything can happen. And look at that NASDAQ, man. The strength in the NASDAQ up eight-tenths percent. Amazon shares... Barely positive, but look at Microsoft up 2.2%, folks. And how about Apple? Let's see it. Apple's got to be up big, too. Apple up 7 tenths percent. Microsoft, man, watch out for that stuff. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman, coming up live next with the Trader's Edge. Uh, excuse me, the Tiger Technician Tower live program.